Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage and welcome back to a new series of Crusader Kings 2 with the Reaper's Due DLC. As promised before, I'm restarting my game as the Duke of Burgundy because I made a complete mess of it last time around, mainly because I hadn't really played CK2 for a long while and in fact I hadn't played it since the, um, well before Horse Lords came out. So I hadn't played the Horse Lords DLC uh, even though it doesn't really affect what's going on in Western Europe, but I hadn't played the Conclave DLC either, and I hadn't played the Reaper's Due DLC. So there are three different DLCs added to this game since I last played it. So hopefully now that I've had a few more hours practice and uh, I remember a little bit more of what I'm doing, and remember I was never an expert at CK2 to begin with, hopefully now we will have a slightly better run. So I've restarted the game with exactly the same settings as before, with one exception. Uh, we've still got the Sunset Invasion disabled, but I've also gone ahead and turned off Shattered Retreat. So what that means now is when an army is defeated in battle, instead of them running halfway across the map to recover and you have to chase them down, they will just move to the neighbouring province. Now, it does mean you end up with lots of games of ping pong where you're just moving your armies between two provinces to chase down and finish off the enemy army. I don't mind because that is how it used to be in Crusader Kings 2 until one of the recent expansions when they changed it. It doesn't really matter like it does in EU4, where there are zones of control in the form of forts. And if an army shatters and runs behind one of those forts, it can make it pretty impossible to get at and finish off. So in this game, it's just a case of if you win a fight, you just want it to be over and done with. So we've turned off Shattered Retreat, basically putting the game's retreat mechanic back to how it used to be a few expansions ago. So let's make sure we have the right view on. We would like to see our, um, well, our realm, I suppose. Let's just go and, um, is it shift click, control click? There we go. There we are. There's there's Burgundy. There's us there. So we'll do all of the usual things. Important decisions are available. Yes, we would like to recruit a court physician. So we will send out the riders. We are unmarried. Okay. Um, do we have an ambition to get married? Acquire a title? Become exalted? Become king? There isn't, there isn't the one to just... Um, get married anymore let's become the um chat uh, the counselor because i think we used to be able to become uh Carloman's chancellor so we'll put that as our um our focus or well, not our focus our um i've got this already this thing what's it called ambition um our focus will start off with hunting it's always a good one to get early on for the extra health and we need to arrange a marriage so let's have a look so well, we could potentially get a princess, princess of uh, France here. Unfortunately, though, uh, she's only 12 years old, so we would have to wait quite some time to be able to get her. She's also playful, willful, and fussy. Although we could probably wait a few years and get away with that. We don't really need the stats right now. Or we could go for a princess of Lombardy who has very poor stewardship. We could go for another princess of Lombardy who has better stewardship. Or that one who has really good stewardship. I think she might be the one that we want to go for there. I like how she's a flamboyant schemer but only has an intrigue of one. Uh, let's go for the Princess of uh, Lombardy. That should be fine. Uh, vassal Inheritance Warning. Okay, not much we can do about that right now. Uh, some minor titles grantable. And we've got two children lack a focus. So, uh, you are my son. You are rowdy, so we definitely want to give you struggle. We can always try and get you betrothed. And in fact, you're 10, so let's get you betrothed to that Princess of Francia. That might help out a little bit. And um, also, we've got another son, I assume. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you are curious, but I think we will still put you on struggle for the time being. And again, we'll see if we can arrange you to be wed with somebody. You're only 7. And we, we are short of options for you. Maybe we'll we'll wait a little while and come back to you. Now, one thing that we can do before we actually start is we should be able to go to our laws. And straight away, we can change to uh, elective monarchy. We could actually go to... Um, now, I'm trying to remember which way around these ones work. Elective gavel kind. Yeah, it's still divided. So we could go for seniority, where the oldest member of the dynasty always inherits the titles. But it does annoy your sort of firstborn son. 
or we can go for elected monarchy which can be a little bit dangerous because people can vote for somebody who is not in your dynasty but it's usually better than gavel kind because i find the problem with gavel kind with gavel kind your kingdom is constantly getting split up which is really really annoying um so who do we want to vote for so we've got um the count count uh, Theoduin of nevers who is our son uh, he's got a lot of stewardship not got a lot of diplomacy unfortunately um, and then there's also Duke Guillaume, Guillaume of Toulouse. Um, he's a schemer, really. He's not going to like that um, change in the law, of course, because that now means that he won't actually uh, get any land. So that's 30 years he's going to be upset with us. But, you know, not really a lot we can do about that. So um, I think, yeah, it is it is fine to uh, to vote for our son for the time being. So we will nominate you, sir. And then, of course, we need to sort out our council. So before we do anything with our councillor, uh, with our chancellor, our marshal wants to train troops in Dijon, which is our capital. Uh, did we do, not used to be able to just get this to show our actual realm? Uh, let's just put it on. That's Dijon duchies, but at least we can... I want to see my stuff. Let's control and click. Yeah. So, control click on that. There we go. We can see my stuff. So, uh, we want our steward, who doesn't really like us, but you're going to be collecting taxes there. Our spy master, um, you might as well go and study technology down in Byzantium. But we don't want you in Constantinople. Uh, it's a little bit risky, so we will put you in Calliopolis because it has the same tech. So, if we go and have a look at um, Constantinople, it's 6107. And uh, 6107 here in Calliopolis. I think Thrake's the same as well. So less, slightly less chance of being caught. But uh, obviously if there was somebody we really wanted to get rid of, we could happily go and dump them down in uh, Constantinople. Uh, as usual, court chaplain down to Rome. Improve religious relations in case we ever need the Pope's help. So before we start fabricating any, fr uh, any claims, which we could do, I guess we need to have a look at who we have to improve relations with. So... Uh, and funnily, funnily enough, our son is actually um, not even our vassal. Uh, he is a uh, vassal under Carloman himself. So we need to look at our uh, our own court. And uh, it's right-click, isn't it? Everyone in our own court is actually happy at the moment, which is quite nice. So if that's the case, we should probably consider starting to fabricate some claims. I don't believe we have any claims at the moment. We do have some claims over here uh, because these are... Uh, well, we could... Um, Try and fight for independence. Obviously, fabricating claims on these wouldn't be a good idea because it belongs to our liege. So we probably want to fabricate some claims on somebody else. So once again, let's just have a quick look at um, our realm. So uh, this isn't ours, is it? No, you are a liege directly under the uh, the king. What about um, Boron? I mean, Bourbon, even. I mean, we can attack, because I think these guys, you can actually, they don't need to be independent. Yeah, so normally, you can only attack somebody if they're independent. If they're not independent, you have to declare war on their liege. But if their liege is the same liege as you, then you can declare war on them. So we could go and try and um, pick on this guy down here. It should be possible. Um, he's only got about 367 men. Uh, we've not got many more than that, but he's probably the best one to, to pick on early on. Uh, what is the Dijon Duchy of Burgundy? So that's Burgundy. This is Upper Burgundy, which, say, unfortunately, does, uh, some of it does belong to, um, to the king himself. Although we could potentially go and, uh, try and get a claim on some of Upper Burgundy. That wouldn't be a bad idea. We could go for um, Neuchatel down here. Let's try that then. So we'll get our councillor. You are going to fabricate claims down there. It may or may not work. Um, you're probably the Duke of Upper Burgundy, aren't you? No, you're not actually, you don't actually hold a, a, a ducal title. Okay, that's fine then. Okay, so after um, 10 minutes of waffling, it's time to unpause the game. Now, I'm also experimenting with some different recording software, so this is definitely going to be um, interesting to see how well it works. 
Uh, the Lords of Middle Francia have approved the institution of the title Revocation Allowed Law. Well, hopefully we won't get ours uh, removed. Our wife has arrived, so uh, we can either gain 14 gold or 25 prestige. I think at this point we're going to take the prestige because that is always helpful. The more prestige you have, the more people like you. Um, and um, King Carl of West Francia has decided to accept the betrothal of my son to uh, his daughter. At least I believe that's his daughter. I think that's his daughter. Ah, no, it's his sister. Yeah, okay. Married to the sister of the, uh, the, the kings of France. Your scouts inform you of a most skilled physician residing in a nearby village. Even though he lacks any formal schooling and supposedly is a raging alcoholic, the villagers swear he has been able to cure any ailment afflicting them. This Dagobert could easily be persuaded to take up residence in your court. So this guy is uh, known as the Impaler. Wow, I'm not too sure about that. Um, he does have a lot of learning. He's proud. He doesn't really have any sort of physician skills, and he's a drunkard. I think we've uh, we'll um, pass on that guy. Uh, all of a sudden, there he just died. Um. Uh, a troubadour and his wife with the Trobirits, I'm sure this game just has words that I can't pronounce, I've never heard of before, has arrived from Octana. Their performances range from the vulgar satires to political serventes. What? Who makes these words up? And everything in between, including songs and poems of courtly love. Uh, charitable. Yeah, brilliant. That's nice. Get some extra diplomacy, some church opinion. Always a good start. So hopefully, the um, Middle Francia and West Francia will start to break up. I mean, obviously you've got the stuff that goes on between uh, Carl and Carloman. But hopefully they'll start to uh, mess around and lose titles and things and we'll be able to sort of grab some land for ourselves. But I should have actually gone for this province here. Not that it really matters. I just want to start to try and grab some provinces in that duchy. And then hopefully we'll get given the title. I guess we didn't actually become a uh, councillor, which is a little bit of a shame. So who is your uh, councillor? Uh, you're the steward. You're the chancellor, are you? And you have a diplomacy of 22 compared to my diplomacy of 16. Well, yeah, that's understandable. There used to be a way you could ask to become a, uh, or a commander, apparently. To avoid injuries or in order to lead your own troops, it might be a good idea to resign from your duty as commander. Doesn't actually... There's no penalties for resigning as a commander. At least I don't believe there is. Let's go up to speed four. And hopefully uh, things will start to happen. I have got minor titles we can grant. I do want to keep my eye on people in my court. Opinion of Liege. Why don't I like him much? Because we want a seat on the council. Right. Under pressure from the powerful faction, King Carloman of Middle Francia has agreed to increase the power of the council. Okay, that's fine. We're still not on the council, so we don't actually like our king at the moment. But all of my own vassals actually like me right now. Which is a good thing. But yeah, we are a commander, so we are leading troops. We're actually leading troops in Troy, so we've got to be careful. We don't want to end up getting killed off. We may decide at some point that we want to actually uh, resign that. Mission to Rome has been a success, so we are improving papal relations. I would like to get some money to start building some buildings in our uh, capital holding, hopefully to try and get some more... Um, uh, words. Uh, hopefully to try and get some more... Uh, levy, but uh, we also want to save that money for fabricating claims. Uh, we've got bad news from our stewards. Uh, from our steward, uh, he's increased the local revolt risk because he failed to collect a tithe. Well, that can happen. It's unfortunate. I don't really think there's anyone that we could appoint to these roles who would be better for them. That's not true, actually. We've got somebody here with uh, 12 intrigue. So you're going to be our new uh, spy master, and uh, off you can go again to Calliopolis. And uh, what about our court chaplain? Uh, 18 is our current best, that's fine. Chancellor, 
We could replace you with an eight, but it's not worth annoying a powerful vassal for the sake of one extra point. Our marshal is our son. Um, he's a nine. He's the best we've got. Our steward is only an eight. We could replace him with a 14, but again, powerful vassal. And he's our other... Is he our other son? No, but we, we do want to probably just keep him on there for now. So we are actually leading troops, even though we're not the ones fighting. And this is good because we're actually getting some battle ability here. So through staged war games and large scale exercises, I feel confident I can master one of the main military disciplines. So uh, mounted warriors, cavalry, heavy foot uh, or light foot. Now the question is, what is our levy mainly made up of? If we go and have a look... Uh, there used to be a way to see this um, somewhere. can't actually see what the numbers are now. If we just go and look in our uh, capital province, though, we should be able to see what our levy is here. So, yeah, you can see we've got 81 light infantry, 202 heavy infantry, 61 cavalry. And as with most feudal lords, uh, ca um, heavy infantry is going to be the majority of what you have. So we will go for heavy foot. Although I believe light foot actually... Includes archers as well. Uh, but heavy foot definitely seems to be the optimal way to go early on. Now, so we are trying to work on a claim here. It might take a while to get. And I really would like to be able to build something here. Um, castle walls would be good. It would increase our tax income and our levy size. Uh, getting the keep could be useful as well. But the castle walls are relatively cheap. So I think we go ahead and work on that. Uh, one child lacks a focus. So this is our son. Again, we'd like to try and get him on the, the road for Marshall if we can. And uh, you're the one that's now betrothed. You lack an education focus. We definitely want to sort of pile you into Marshall. Let's see if we can go ahead and get that um, other son um, betrothed now. Because we've got a few sons here. So can we find anyone decent for you? You are nine years old. And the options all seem to be limited here to uh, courtiers, which is not great. You're nine. Can we find someone closer to your own age? Possibly. Someone with half decent stats. You're strong, but you're only one year old. Again, I think we wait a little while on that one. Let's not rush into things. Uh, my lord, it seems that Count Nibelung of Charlonnet has finally decided to come out of hiding, no longer fearful for his life. Um, so that is you, my half-brother. Okay. Why were you in hiding? Oh, oh, all of a sudden things have changed. So it looks like the assassination of Carloman happened, and uh, now Charlemagne, King Carl, Charlemagne is in charge of the whole of France. My liege, I've collected the tithe in Dijon. The money should reach you together with this letter. Your humble steward, Count Erinald of Uxair. Now, let's just pause up for a moment because things are now going to have changed. So our liege is now um, King Carl of West France here. Which now means we... Oh, now you've, you've directly inherited that... Um, Count, county, unfortunately, because I thought we could have just gone and fought for that. We'll make getting independence a little bit harder, but we can hang on for a while. I mean, we are a duke and we will be able to get more powerful. We certainly want to try and take stuff from within. Uh, if we can, we'll, uh, we'll start working on that. We do need to fabricate claims, though. That's the, the problem. The church is a greedy thing who always needs more arms, but I have deep pockets and it's for a good cause. So we lose a little bit of gold. It didn't seem like we gained anything for that. You would have assumed we'd have at least gained some uh, some piety or something. Um, King Carl of West Francia has transferred the vassalage of Count Stefan to Duke Theodric of Burgundy. Oh, Stefan Overdune. So okay, so you were you were where now? Okay, gonna have to find you now. Vassals. You. You are... Oh, so you're now my vassal, are you? That's interesting. Now, what duchy are you in? This is the duchy of... Um... So, du the duchy of uh, Auvergne. It's not Auvergne. Auvergne. And you're now my vassal. But you're a double count. There's no, there's no uh, duchy title there. 
That was quite nice of you. That'll improve things quite nicely. So what we really want to do down here is try and grab... Um, grab Dolphin A, Dolphin A, really, as opposed to Upper Burgundy. Let's go ahead and move our um, Chancellor. Uh, in fact, let's get you improving relations with this guy first, actually. Um, is That is where he is residing, is it not? He's a powerful vassal. Um, you are residing in Auvergne, which is fine, yeah. And uh, you don't like me. You are also a powerful vassal. You've got a stewardship of 10. So you're a 6, 8, 10. I'm not sure if I've got a council position for you. Um, 6, 8, 10. You are a better steward than my current steward. What are your other abilities? You've got 9 learning. We could make you our spy master. 12, no, 4. You're terrible. Do we have a uh, advisor's position available? We do not. Well, he'll just have to not be on the council for now. Though it is tempting, though. I mean, you've got that 10 stewardship. You are better than our current... You are better than our current steward. And you who are just a count and you've only got a stewardship of 19 you've got 300 troops to your name you have got 500 troops to your name yep i think we swap those guys around um so this is going to be given to you that will please you greatly and you're going to collect taxes in our capital that way we've actually got more chance of actually getting some tithes uh, but that was an interesting development, uh, something that didn't happen at the start of the first game. Obviously, we can create the uh, Duchy of Auvergne now, but I don't think we want to do that because I think that will actually make that guy independent because then he will be a duke the same as me. But hopefully, we will start to expand in the next video. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you are enjoying Crusader Kings 2. I'll see you next time, and until then, goodbye for now.